Bonnie Jean Betcher is a singer-songwriter who comes from Maynard, Massachusetts. She's originally from Pennsylvania, where she grew up as a child running around outside with other kids, getting in trouble, and loving music. Uh, Bonnie Jean said that her next door neighbors uh, would often put on shows with her, complete with props and choreography, and they'd perform for their parents. She came from a musical family with her mother at piano, her father at guitar, singing as a family, Christmas carols, and through the year, there was always music in the house. The first whole song she remembers writing was in fifth grade with her verses and piano accompaniment. <laughs> Bonnie Jean said, I think most life experiences I've lived through have one way or another contributed to the subsequent songs that she has written and composed. First love and breakup, and then subsequent repeats, <laughs> but also about family, friends, life, school, work. Now she works as an engineer by trade, biomedical, mm -hmm. biomedical engineer, and, but a musician by vocation. And not only does she perform as a solo singer-songwriter, but also uh, in chorus, in musical theater, a cappella groups, tenor and barbershop chorus, and a barbershop quartet. And when I asked Bonnie Jean about a most interesting moment and in sharing one of her original songs, she said, I wrote a song in graduate school for my a cappella group that was about being an engineering student. It was goofy complete with Star Trek references and a rap about electrical equations. It was a ton of fun to perform. It's of course been years now since then. A few months ago I met someone who had recently graduated and had actually been at that same a cappella group. And I found out that they're still performing my tech school junkie song. <laughs> Tech school junkie. <laughs> we never got a real chance to record it, and because it has so many voice parts, I haven't been able to perform it since, so it was wonderful for me to know it's still alive. <laughs> so we look forward to hearing what alive songs are in Bonnie Jean this morning. Please give her a round, warm round of applause. Bonnie Jean. I jump right in. The first song I have for you today is called uh, Running Backwards. Just like 
the daily grind Making more money but finding less and less and less time Well, get up, dust off the dreams buried in your mind Oh, your soul has been neglected so open up your eyes You may still fall on your face but So that concludes the serious portion of my set. <laughs> um, the next song that I have is called Pop Song, and I think it will be kind of self-evident when I play it, so I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> song and make it sound real pretty and I'll sing right along to my little ditty and it's the same three chords and it's the same old lyrics I need you I love you I want you right now oh baby oh oh baby oh <laughs> My friend said to me, go on and join the crowd in New York City. You could earn the title and be our next American Idol. But they'll sing the same old songs and it's those same three judges. You sing okay, but you're sexy. Now let's cut to a commercial break. I'm gonna mbop it down to the back streets. I'm gonna vogue in sync with myself. I'll Macarena with Enrique while the Spice Girls are living La Vida. Yeah. Hanging tough in O Town with Vanilli. We see the artist formerly known looking regal. Tell me, Brittany, when did Congress pass the bill to make prostitution legal? <laughs> Cause it's no longer a tool for expression, but just a way of making money. And they love it and they crave it, so shake that. Oh, baby, oh. Trumpet solo. I'll 
I'll write that pop song and I'll make it sound all pretty. Then you'll all sing along to my little ditty. It'll be the same three chords and all the same damn lyrics. I need you, I want you, I can't you love me? Oh baby, oh, 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 oh
to say the cat doesn't appreciate that one. <clears throat> he hates it when I sing, actually. He'll, he'll stand right in front of me and just howl, like, you know. It's, it's not very subtle in his opinions. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, this last song I wrote way back in college. Um, it's not the tech school junkie song, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but uh, when I play it, it will be obvious that I wrote this in college. So <laughs> hope you enjoy it. And thank you again so much for having me here. We go parading around in our special colors and funny symbols. Behind closed doors, we hold our ancient sacred rituals. And you don't understand our love, you don't understand the bond. You think our promiscuity is the only thing we have to stand upon. You only wish that you could be a sorority girl. Judge me by my jacket or by the size of my chest Then you're no better than all the ignorant, prejudging, insolent rest Cause all my sisters have a sense of humor and they don't mind me At least that's what I hope, cause if they don't, they could find me Lots and lots of money. Nobody ever gets that line, so I have to explain it <clears throat> about the fining. So um, when I was in a sorority, because I, I actually was, <laughs> um, I was terrible about, about showing up for events, you know, and um, to try and inspire people to show up, they would fine you for like meetings and stuff if you didn't go, if it was considered mandatory. So by my senior year, I racked up probably about $350 in debt. <laughs> just because I didn't go. And um, one of my sorority sisters is here, so she can attest to that. <laughs> so yeah, guess then I'd be a broke SOL sorority girl. <laughs> you don't know how hard it is when you're going Greek. I could only pledge Tri Delta when I wanted to rush tea. Beirut and Beer Ice Luge have become my closest friends. I don't know if my grades will last until the end of the semester. And then I wouldn't get to be a sorority girl. Crombie and Fitch are the only clothes I ever wear. I am a size zero because I don't eat, but aren't I cute? <laughs> See me twirl my hair, I, I twirl my hair, and you're just jealous because I got the frat boys wrapped around my little finger. I scream all of our songs, and everyone says I'm a wonderful singer. And I just smile and say it's because I'm a sorority girl. I owe my life to those cute gals. They are my very best of pals. And you can sneer and you can scowl, but you'll never be a sorority girl. alone behind these walls and I dug a moat you'll never cross you can't reach me 
don't even try I'll live alone until I die Each morning comes I curse the sky The sunlight warms I know not why My heart stays cold As I wipe my brow I live alone My solemn vow Every living hour You fill my mind With every grain of sand That marks the time Your smile and scent Still haunts my soul I live alone And it takes its toll So I'll put on my armor For the battles sure to come in the night And I'm not sure if I can garner up the courage and the will to survive So my drawbridge is raised and secured And my sword and crown surrendered as you Love's arrow who strikes, but draws no blood. You feel no pain, passions flood, but don't pull it out. Oh, you will see, I live alone. You can't reach me, I live alone. You can reach me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Perry. Generation Gap. She was born at Woodstock, and her parents never failed to tell the story. Right there in the meadow, in the pouring rain, they say. The years have added thunder, lightning, and a Santa Claus-like hippie handing out cigar-sized joints to celebrate. She never tells anyone. It does nothing for her credibility. She told a college boyfriend once, a musician who would have sucked the blood from her veins to get closer to the 60s. As her parents might say, it freaked her out. They still live in a cabin in Vermont. Their compost heap outhouse and scruffy goats embarrass her even when she's alone. And if she brings a friend along, her parents inevitably play the Woodstock album and haul out their dog-eared photographs in which they see rain-drenched, tie-dyed people celebrating freedom, love, and joy. All she sees are pigs in the mud and herself a pink piglet squealing in protest. <laughs> Another Sunday in the park. Someone has started a calliope in the empty field. Children run from all directions. The narrator, having over imbibed at the feast, is still asleep. This will not do. Life is meant to have a shape. However, an artist is creating a large, is erecting a large easel 
so we may be okay unless it starts raining again. At the party, the candidates stood on raised platforms and pelted each other with ripe tomatoes provided by a blind farmer who wishes to remain anonymous. <laughs> Some of this might indeed be explained by the author if he were awake. It is mistakenly assumed that the children are in no danger because the carousel horses orbit a fixed point. Thank you.